Hey, good morning, guys. How are we doing today? A couple of people have asked how we build all the custom cabinets. So taking a look at these, we're going to watch Jordan for a little while do some assembly on custom cabinets today. If you got any questions, please ask. We'll talk in the end when we're all done. All right, guys. Today we're going to show you a little bit more in depth on how to build a cabinet. We take a look here. We have what would be cabinet number eight. And this is essentially the frame layout. It also gives you your uh, rail and style sizes. This is your top rail, right style, bottom rail, etc., etc. Kind of just gives you a description of the whole cabinet. Uh, if you go to like the base cabinet, it'll even separate your drawer box sizes, your drawer fronts, your doors, everything that needs to be listed in to put a cabinet together. So currently I'm working on cabinet number eight here. So what we're gonna do is come over here to our cart that Braxton, a few, hello, that Braxton just cut up today. This all comes off the CNC and gets labeled with the part numbers. So we are looking for number eight. Another thing this tells me is the type of piece that we are looking for too. You see your scribes, so this right scribe is a one inch scribe, which means it's an unfinished end. However, this left side has a zero inch scribe, which means that the end is finished. This is kind of an example of what a finished end looks like. So this would be listed as a zero. It's flush with this end. This is an example of a one inch scribe where this overhangs about an inch and it butts into another cabinet or a wall or something that it gives us a little bit of play if we need to scribe it to a wall or take some off to fit in between wall spaces. We account to be right on the money. However, sometimes that doesn't always go to plan and we need to cut down the cabinet so that it fits in the area. All right, so at this point, we have all of our pieces that we found on our cart over there. So we're gonna start assembly. You can see here, I kind of just have started. It's placed here so it doesn't fall over. We have a dado in our board that is gonna fit into this right here. It's gonna seat right in with this end of the board. So we're gonna throw some glue in here and put staples on this side and pins on this side. Pins are gonna go on that side because it puts in less of a hole in the cabinet that we need to fill on our finished ends. So here we use a nice quality wood glue. A lot of your prefab shops and your box cabinets will put in like a hot melt. It doesn't really stick together all that great. This is gonna adhere really well and make your cabinets extra durable and strong. So once we put the pins in there, a lot of what the pins are doing is just holding the piece in place until the glue dries. So at this point we need to bring our end piece level with our bottom piece. There's a rabbit on the back end down here that is not on your unfinished ends. That is to make sure that the back seats into the cabinet and you end up flush out the back. So now we're flush, we're gonna staple. Gonna do the same thing for this end except with pins. I just got thought of some eyes. That's why you always wear safety glasses. Safety first. So at this point we have our carcass assembled and we need to sand our frame so that we don't have to sand it after and risk scratching the inside of the cabinet. So after the frame sanded, we're gonna roughly square up our carcass so that we can put our face frame on top and attach it via glue and pins. America. You gotta excuse him, he gets a little weird when he's on camera. Yes, sir. Entertainment, man. Entertainment. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna lay our face frame on top and run it just past this finished end so that we can sand it flush. 
Uh, we do not run our space frames past our finished ends like a lot of box cabinets do. It's a really nice finish we want to get and it comes out flush. You can sometimes barely even see that there's even a joint there. So, Especially on our painted products. This is stained so you'll see a bit of a joint but we want to try to avoid any sort of joint being seen right here. Alright guys, so this is what I mean about it being just past. If you run this way of your end panel, you risk burning the veneer. Um, so we run it past and belt sand this down to bring it flush and finish off of the buffer to get out any scratch marks or vi visual blemishes that the belt sander puts in. So again, that correlates to our drawing where our left scribe is zero, finished end. So that makes it so that our right scribe should be one inch. So we're gonna do exactly that. We gotta hold our tape measure and keep it consistent across this whole edge. Another thing that we want to watch for is to keep this consistent here. We run a little gap on the bottom of our cabinets so that if you have plates or something in here, it can bump against this edge and not topple over onto your floor. So we use a biscuit, which is about an eighth inch in depth, and we kind of run this along the whole thing to try to make it as square as possible. run some pins along the top and then this cabinet is shipping over to Braxton. So what Braxton's going to be doing here is putting in the bracing and padding for all the cabinets. Um, some of those need padding because they're bases with drawers. Uh, something like this upper is only going to need braces. We'll show you how to do the padding as well but following this cabinet along he's going to be filling all these holes from the pins and staples. Cutting bracing right now. Hello! This side we're going to pocket screw in, this side we're good enough to staple. Last step before sanding, we gotta fill all the holes. Sample A. The color match cutter putt cutter putty. It is that cutter putty. It's that cutter putty. No, <laughs> a color matched color putty. Oh I'll say that ten times fast. Here, try it. Color match color putty. Oh, that's pretty oh. good. Color match color putty, color match color. <laughs> Anyways, we gotta sand or no, we gotta fill the holes before we can sand. And after the sanding, the cabinet goes down into production, gets sprayed, finished, and that's none of this process. So. In this case, we're doing a base cabinet with drawers. So in order for the slides to run flush with the side and keep your drawer box straight, we need to pad out in the back the same distance as it is in the front. So our slide can run equal and not be crooked coming in this direction. Half inch pads.
so that was Jordan on some time lapse with all those cabinets. You see what we did and how we do it? Like I said, any questions, throw them out there. Hit the like, hit subscribe. Let's keep moving, people. Have a great day. See ya.